everything you draw has some kind of texture and you will need to use different coloring techniques to create something you can normally feel. Creating texture in your drawing will make it look more realistic. Different techniques are used for different textures. For example, you will need to use a different technique for clothing than for the skin or for the hair. In this video, I will go over 10 different coloring techniques that will help you create texture in your drawings. The first one is circulism. This technique is used for areas where you want to create a smooth color. You will color with lots of tiny circles and let the circles overlap each other. You can add as many layers as you need to create the smoothness you want. So you will continue adding layers until you have the layer dark enough or smooth enough. You can layer using one color or mix and blend multiple colors to get the exact color you want. When adding multiple colors, you want to make sure you color with light pressure so you blend the colors nicely together. The second technique is hatching. This is a layering technique where you color an area using lines all going in the same direction. Keep your lines close together if you want a smoother finish. Or you can leave space between the lines to create a rougher texture. This technique is often used when coloring larger areas. And with this technique, you can also add as many layers as you need to create the smoothness you want. But just remember to use light pressure for every layer. The third technique is cross hatching. This is a layering technique where you color an area with the first layer of lines going in one direction and then to make it darker, you go over the area again with lines in the opposite direction. You will keep your lines close together if you want a smoother finish. And keep on adding layers until you're satisfied. The fourth technique is contour lines. You will color in the direction that the object curves. This technique is used to create contour lines, for example, wrinkles on the skin or folds in clothes. Make sure to blend the lines to make it look more realistic. And also pay attention to where the light falls on your drawing. On every wrinkle or fold, there usually is a highlight on one side and a shadow on the other side. That will make the wrinkle or fold look round instead of just looking like a line on your drawing. The fifth technique is the white pencil. You can use white to create lighter tones as well as add texture on top of darker colors. Some brands of pencils are better than others. The luminous white, for example, is excellent as it is soft and opaque and this will add the texture and finishing touches very well. The white pencil usually doesn't show over lighter colors, so you will need to use a darker color to make the white layer show up or use another technique. You can also use other lighter colors for your lighter tones or if the white pencil turned out too bright, you can go over it with another light color like beige or light gray. Or you can color over the lines again to create a nice gradient if you need to add a shadow to that area. The next technique is scotch tape. To use this, you will color an area and add several layers. Then use a piece of tape to lift up some of the colored pencil. It's better if the tape is not too sticky because then it doesn't pull off too much colored pencil. You can remove some of the stickiness of the tape by touching it on your pants or your skin somewhere. Now 
This technique is great for small detailed areas. If you accidentally pulled up too much color, you can just recolor that area. Now the seventh technique is the craft knife. After you have burnished the layers, burnishing is when you use medium to hard pressure on your last layer to make it smooth. So when you have enough layers of colored pencil, you can use a craft knife to remove the colored pencil. Remember this only works if you have enough layers of colored pencils and you will need to be careful. You don't want to use too much pressure because then you'll damage or cut the paper. You also don't want the tip to scratch your paper. Just gently scrape away the colored pencil. Experiment and practice with this first on another piece of paper before you use this technique on your drawing. You can hold the craft knife at different angles and use different amounts of pressure to see how it turns out and to get used to this technique. I love to use this technique for drawing hair, beards or for any other small details. There is a material list available under the video if you would like to know which materials I use. The eighth technique is with an embossing tool. You can use an embossing tool or you can just use the tip of a mechanical pencil. This can be very handy for creating small thin details like highlights, flyaway hairs or maybe whiskers in animal portraits. You can indent the paper where you want fine details. And with this technique it's difficult to see what you're doing, so what I do is hold a light to the side of my drawing paper. You can just use your flashlight from your phone and that will make it easier to see the indented lines. Now once you color over it, the colored pencil won't go into those indented areas. So you can create a very beautiful texture this way. After coloring the whole area, all of the indented lines will have the same white value. If you want to create, for example, shadowed areas somewhere, what I do is sharpen the pencil and with a sharp tip I carefully color in those indented lines so you have more of a gradient or a shadow instead of all of these bright white lines. This can make your drawing look even more realistic. The ninth technique is an eraser. An eraser can also help you to create highlights or texture. Colored pencils are much more difficult to erase than graphite. The more layers you have, the more difficult it will be to erase. That's why it's important to layer using light pressure with colored pencils. Now, you won't be able to erase the color completely, but you can lighten it a bit. If you want to leave an area white in your drawing, you will need to color around it or use another technique for the smaller details. The last technique is an acrylic marker. I use this to create very bright highlights in my drawings or you can use it to create texture and clothing. This is a white acrylic paint marker. Once it's dry, you can easily color over it again if you want to. But make sure not to press too hard with your colored pencil or you will remove the acrylic paint. So if the lines turned out too bright, you can gently go over it with the colored pencil to add some color again. Or again, if you want to create a gradient or a shadow to that area. Before you use this technique on your drawing, it's important to practice this on another piece of paper. It's best to get to know your materials before you use them. 
So to create some kind of texture in your drawings, you can use one of these techniques. You can try these techniques out for yourself and see what works best for you. Whenever you're creating a realistic drawing, you will know which technique to use and how to use it. If you would like to learn more about drawing with colored pencils, you can join us in the membership. In the real-time drawing videos, you can follow my entire drawing process. While drawing, I think out loud, explain my techniques and show you how to fix mistakes when they happen. You can also reach out if you want to, so I can help you move forward. This way you don't have to figure it all out by yourself. You can read more details about the membership in the link below the video. And if you have any questions, you can leave a comment under the video. Now don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.